Hey there people, so today's guide is all about sword shrines, the enchanted sword and the legendary Arcalis. So I'm going to tell you how to find enchanted sword shrines, I'm going to tell you the chances of getting each type of sword, I'm going to give you a comparison of the enchanted sword versus the Arcalis and how to farm them. Now that being said, the only way to really farm them involves uh, what most people would call cheating, but I will tell you about that at the end of the episode, um, and especially to farm the Arcalis itself. It's a very rare sword. It's very hard to get. It's These swords are not dropped by enemies, so um, you kind of have a chance to get them, and I'll get to that. But um, I am covering all platforms, PC, console, and mobile, all versions. Um, but first of all, what is a sword shrine? Well, the sword shrines themselves only actually exist since the 1.3 update. Uh, so that currently is on PC, PS4, and as of today, actually, the uh, 1.3 update has just been released on Xbox One. So um, congratulations, Xbox One fans. <laughs> You've got the 1.3 update. On other uh, platforms, you will not actually find sword shrines, but you can still find enchanted swords uh, and even the Arcalis, uh, whoops, let me just interject and correct myself here. Actually, the Arcalis is only available since the 1.3 update. So unfortunately, if you're on a platform that doesn't have the 1.3 update, you cannot get the Arcalis. That means whatever else I might say in the video, um, you can only get the Arcalis if you have the 1.3 update. And that means either you find a real enchanted sword or a fake one. So there you go. Underground in, uh, they, they just won't be in shrines. You'll find them kind of randomly distributed as far as I can tell underground. Um, it's not quite as clear about how that works. But first of all, the sword shrines themselves, um, there is always one shrine according to the wiki. I'm, I'm going by the wiki on, on the uh, details of the likelihoods and so on. Uh, there's always one sword shrine in small worlds, three in medium worlds, and four in large worlds. So uh, actually, if you're looking for sword shrine specifically, you're actually best to be in a medium world because it's of course easier to explore a medium world um, versus a large world. So although there are more in a large world, a large world is a lot bigger, you'll be able to find them easier in a medium world. And sword shrines basically um, are found below any biome that has dirt and stone um, as the surface of that biome. So generally that's going to be in your forest biome. Uh, sometimes it will be in the corruption or the crimson. Uh, it will not be in your snow biome or your desert biome. Uh, and what you're looking for is generally a long uh, one block wide shaft below the surface of um, the world. And you'll Sometimes the shaft will come all the way to the surface. Sometimes it will intersect with a cave that connects to the surface or uh, otherwise um, it will be exposed in some way. But often, and I would say most often in my experience, um, it will be a little, it will end like just below the surface of, uh, of the world. So you'll need to something to look for it. Um, you'll need something to basically lighten the, the top layer of the ground so that you can see what's just below the surface. And uh, so that's what I'm going to tell you about first. Um, now that I've explained what they are. Um, it's also worth noting if you find um, one sword shrine, they're usually at the same depth in whatever world, um, whatever depth they're at in the world that you're in, if you find one, you can often tunnel uh, horizontally across to find additional ones. So um, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into it a little bit here. Um, you're going to need, again, something to, uh, to find those sword shrines. You're going to need something to light the top layer of the ground. And so there are a few options that you can use in pre-hard mode. I'm only going to talk about pre-hard mode um, options as far as specific weapons um, to do that because generally you're going to want to find these in pre-hard mode. It's less useful to find them uh, once you're in hard mode. But what you're actually looking for is just anything that helps to light the first little layer of the world. And your best early on option is actually jester arrows. So um, I've gone ahead and prepared a ton of jester arrows. I happen to know actually, um, you know, I'm being honest here. <laughs> I happen to know where they are in this world. You can, of course, use a uh, map viewer, which for the sake of expediency, I've done just to show you how to find them. But um, weapons that are going to be useful, Star Fury, as you can see, um, 
the falling stars will light a certain amount and it's not the best option though the jester's arrow as you can see is better it lights a little bit more uh, it lights a little more obviously like you can see in you know a little vicinity here um, and you can get those actually a little easier, a little more early than uh, the Star Fury. You can, of course, use a combination of things. You may not have enough falling stars to make a ton of Jester arrows, but you can basically just run along the surface of the world firing uh, any of these weapons that lights the ground, and you can see there is one right there. Um, another option, but this is late in pre-hard mode, is the Flame Lash. The Flame Lash is... Uh, actually the best option in pre-hard mode, but it's also the latest option. It's the last one that you're likely to get in pre-hard mode. Um, but it's like the magic missile. You can control this fireball and you can basically just scan along and you can see that that lights that up very nicely. So uh, those are your main options early in the game. You can also use grenades, actually. Grenades will also light enough. Um, probably better than the Star Fury, actually. But, of course, you need to uh, find or buy enough grenades to... Uh, scan the surface of your world and it's also worth noting that these will be um, outside of the inner 20 percent of the map so they will not be right by your spawn point you'll need to go out a ways as you can see i did um, and that is where you will find them so let's dig down in this one and uh, maybe i'll skip the actual digging because digging is boring <laughs> but basically you're going to see that little narrow shaft underground and you're going to want to dig down and find out what's down there. So of course it's one block wide and you really just need to uh, widen that to two blocks to be able to get down it and I will show you when I get to the bottom. Okay, so here we are. I'm just about to break through into the shrine itself and bam, this is what they look like. Um, basically it's a little island in the middle. There's usually a little bit of water on either side. It's kind of a arc shape. And uh, yeah, you'll see that there's a little sword in a stone thing going on here. And that is um, the enchanted sword um, sort of item thing itself. <laughs> and uh, you can see actually that this one is colored and that means that it's a real one. Now again, I cheat a little bit. I used the map viewer so I knew this was going to be a real one. Um, if you don't find a real one, you will find one that's just kind of brown in color. That's one that's a fake sword. So uh, either way, if you just want to be safe, what you just need to do is break it and bam, got an enchanted sword. Um, so that's how it works. You will find these uh, shafts and these shrines in near the surface level or uh, in the underground layer. They will not be lower down the cavern layer. So if you're on one of the platforms that does not have the 1.3 update, um, you will find those little sword in a stone things kind of in those layers as well. And even since the 1.3 update, occasionally you will find them outside of these shrines. They're not strictly in the shrines. I have seen them, um, you know, in little tunnels under the surface area, but they won't be too far down. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, there's no good way of looking for them specifically if you're not on the 1.3 update or since, but uh, at least you know what you're looking for. Uh, now, in terms of my chances um, and your chances, each of these sh sword shrines has a two thirds chance of being a fake sword. That's that brown one I'm talking about. That's not going to give you anything, but it's a one third chance of being a real uh, sword. So basically for every three uh, sword shrines, you're probably just going to get one um, sword on average. Now, as far as what you're actually going to get, though, if you get one of those real ones, so one in three times you'll get a real sword and only, uh, well, nine out of ten of those real swords will be the enchanted sword that I just got. <laughs> Whereas one in ten of them is an Arcalis. And uh, so let's talk about those. Well, the enchanted sword itself which I just got. As you can see, it has a base 24 melee damage. Um, it's a very fast sword. It shoots a beam. So it's actually one of the very few pre-hard mode swords that shoots a beam. So you can see, beam. It's an awesome sword. It is a very excellent way to start the game. Um, it will give you uh, basically a really good start in the game. Now, um, besides that, of course, there's the uh, Arcalis, which I'm going to continue to look for. Um, the Arcalis is not a regular sword. It has unique behavior unlike any other weapon. Uh, it is named after Arcala, the quality director at Relogic. It's modeled after her favorite Chrysigrim sword in Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Um, 
the Arcalis actually has only 20 base damage. So it sounds like, oh, it's not as much damage. Um, and it's auto swing. Uh, the Enchanted Sword is auto swing since the 1.3 update. It actually wasn't before that. Uh, but the Arcalis uh, is auto swing. But what it does actually, rather than it says that it's not all that fast, but actually it inflicts constant damage after being swung. So it's just like slash, slash, slash. It's, you know, um, super fast slashes and you basically just hold the button down and it kills whatever's around you so it's actually a very powerful weapon despite its low base damage it is the better of the two and it's actually useful well into hard mode um, because of that constant damage now i am going to show you that uh so give me a second i need to hunt around and i will tell you about farming as well as uh, giving you a demonstration of the two side by side just a moment all right here's one other thing i wanted to show you as i was saying sometimes these uh Sword shrines actually intersect with uh, caves and so on. Um, and this is actually a perfect example of that. You can see that there's this depression in the surface of the world. And right below here, um, you can see obviously this, this shaft even went up here, even though it wasn't a solid block here. And I've seen this kind of thing before, um, where you will have these sometimes intersecting with the surface of the world. So let's see if this one's a real one. No, it's not. It's another enchanted sword. So I'm going to keep looking and uh, be right back. Okay, so this also demonstrates exactly what I was talking about where um, they tend to be at a similar level. I had actually explored this one on the left earlier before I even started making this video. And uh, you can see that this one is like almost right next to it. And that happens sometimes. They'll be nearby. They'll be at similar levels of depth. And uh, in fact, if I look at my map, you can see that those other ones that I showed you are similar as well. So you can actually sometimes find them simply by tunneling across. Um, they'll tend to be at similar levels. Let's see if this one's real. No, it's another enchanted sword. So I have uh, just one left. In fact, as you can see, I've actually explored four already, but this is the world that I uh, used on my multiplayer server. So it actually has more than most worlds would. Um, this one actually has seven enchanted sword shrines. I have one real one left to look at. And uh, so I'll have to show you how to do uh, farming um, because I was going to show you that anyway. So I'll show you how to do farming for these, which does involve a little bit of cheating. We'll see if I get lucky and don't have to cheat, but uh, I'll show you how if you really want to do it that way. All right, so here we are, my last real uh, sword shrine in the game. And as you can see, it does actually intersect with some caves. So uh, this could have been found looking around some caves as well, possibly. Um, but it's a big, long shaft. It's way down there. And uh, I'm going to show you how to guarantee yourself an Arcalis if you're willing to bend the rules, uh, cheat a little. I'm only doing this for the purposes of the video. Um, but this is how you would do it. So when you find a sword shrine that has a real sword, um, you will want to build a little house here and you'll want to uh, build a house, put a bed in it, set your spawn point on that bed. And then actually what you're going to do is go to your menu, turn auto save off, save and exit the game. And, uh, how this works is uh, you're spawning in that house. So, uh, you can spawn in that house, try your luck. Uh, if it doesn't work, just exit the, or force close the game. And this is this is what you're going to have to do because the uh, auto save being off, you'll force close the game uh, on Windows. That's Alt F4. On Mac, it's Command Q. Uh, there should be a way to do that on mobile as well. Um, Linux, uh, Android, uh, Mac OS. That probably depends on your particular platform uh, and version and so on. For those platforms, I don't know those offhand. But uh, what you're going to want to do at this point is actually force close the game. And then you're going to go back in um, and you're going to try your luck and um, see if you get your Arcalis. And you just basically keep doing that until you get it. And you have to force close each time because if you save an exit, obviously it saves your game and you've already got the sword. So uh, I'm going to do that a few times and I'll show you when I get it. This is now attempt number 27. And I finally got it. 27 attempts of doing it that way. So again, um, I don't like doing it this way. I'm only showing you this for the sake of completeness. Uh, if you really don't mind cheating, which I actually do, um, you find a legitimate, you know, the colored uh, sword in the stone, build your house next to it, set your spawn point with the bed there, uh, turn off your autosave, save and exit that first time. 
uh, and then after basically you just enter the game, come over, break the, the sword, and uh, see if you get the Arcalis. If you don't, force close the game uh, and repeat. Just start it up, spawn in the house, uh, break the sword, force close the game, and keep doing it until you get it. I don't like doing it that way. I feel dirty, honestly, for <laughs> having gotten my first Arcalis this way. I'm not even going to use it um, in my actual playthrough because of that, but uh, that is one way of getting it. Of course, if you're going to go that far anyway, if you're on PC, you can just use a map editor and stick one in a chest. <laughs> or you can, uh, another way of doing it that would take even longer, that took me 27 attempts. <laughs> and, uh, and it is, speaking of the, I'll get to the chances again, but um, another way of doing it is that you can just keep creating new worlds and exploring them and looking for sword shrines and, uh, you know, finding those and seeing if you get one. But that was, that's going to take forever because <laughs> obviously um, spawning in here again and again uh, is quicker than creating a whole new world, exploring it finding you know which ones are real and which ones are not and and so on um so that would take really forever but uh this is i guess the fastest way to cheat without using a map editor <laughs> anyway um i don't recommend it i it took me 27 attempts and and i don't feel good doing it but um as far as your chances again it's a one in three that you will find a real sword in one of these shrines um if you're not on the 1.3 onward you're just going to be finding uh, random real or not real swords like in the underground <laughs> and uh, when you do find one that is real it's a 1 in 10 chance that it's going to be the Arcalis it's a 9 out of 10 that it's going to be the regular enchanted sword so overall that's a 9 out of 30 or a 3 out of 10 chance of getting a regular enchanted sword uh, and a 1 out of 30 chance of getting the Arcalis uh, when for each sword shrine or uh, sword in a stone that you find so it's a very low chance um, and that's why the Arcalis is is so rare and unique um, and again I feel bad getting my first one this way because I didn't actually get one until now but as you can see this is what we're talking about it's a unique weapon it is not like a regular sword that you swing you can just hold down the button and attack things all around you and uh, and just like even walk like that and it's really awesome for blocking projectiles and stuff I'm gonna do one more thing I'm gonna set up some uh, dummies and um, just show you what these two swords look like when fighting some dummies. So, um, yeah, if you re just remove your spawn point and then you can uh, warp back, of course, you're going to want to turn your autosave back on, which I'm going to do right now. And uh, I'm going to set up some dummies and be right back. All right, here we are. Uh, just before night, I had to wait out some rain. But uh, I've set up some target dummies. And if you're curious, by the way, target dummies are 20 wood and 50 hay at the sawmill you can uh, get hay by buying the sickle from the merchant and then you just cut some grass and you get tons of hay but anyway i've uh set these up and this is what the enchanted sword looks like against the target dummies and that's pretty impressive it's a very powerful uh sword early in the game but this is what the arcalis looks like or the arcalis you can see i mean the the amount of the damage is lower but the number of hits is way, way higher. And just because of that number of hits, you can do massive damage with this sword. And uh, that's what the Arcalis is all about and why it's so legendary. So uh, basically, um, you can explore your world, look for those uh, sword shrines if you got the 1.3 onward, or just look for swords underground if you don't. Um, and you got a chance, a very good chance actually, of getting one of those swords early in the game. It is probably going to be the enchanted sword under normal circumstances. If you're really lucky or if you're willing to cheat, you can get the Arcalis. So I uh, hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.